Okay, next we want to turn our attention to actually calculating this atomic mass. Uh, so what I'm going to do, do now is do it by way of an example because I could uh, write a bunch of stuff on the board and then, you know, it's really just a lot more clear if we, if we do an example. So here we go. A sample of gallium, the element gallium, contains two isotopes with masses of 68.95 AMU and 70.95 AMU with abundances of 60.16% and 39.84% respectively. What is the average atomic mass of gallium? So I'll read that again. And this tells you everything we need to know. It's, we have two isotopes of gallium. It gives the two different masses of these isotopes and it gives us the different percent abundances of these isotopes. And notice that if we add these percent abundances together, they add up to 100%. Because for this problem, we're just saying, okay, there's only two isotopes in our sample, uh, you know, isotope A and isotope B, so therefore the percent abundances, they must add up to 100% because that's all I have. So what I want to do is find out what the average atomic mass is, which, you know, really the average atomic mass is what's printed on the periodic table. That's what I'm referring to here. The atomic mass of an element is really defined to be the average of all of the, the weighted average, notice we even use that word, weighted average, of all of the isotopes that exist for that element in nature. So how are we going to calculate the uh, average atomic mass of this gallium using this data here? This is going to teach you how we, how we do it for all elements, basically. So the way we do it is, um, is very easy, actually. The um, average atomic mass the average atomic mass is equal to. Now I'm going to write it down and then I'll explain it. So we have the mass of the first isotope, 68.95, times the percent abundance of this isotope. So we said it was 60.16%. Uh, so the way we're going to write it is 0 0.6016. We don't write 60.16%. I'll come back to that later. You always write it as a pure decimal. So we, we have that atomic mass of that isotope times its percent abundance. And you have to add to that the uh, atomic mass of the second guy, 70.95, times the uh, percent abundance of this guy, 0 0.3984. Okay, I'd like to go through the problem uh, all the way to the answer, and then we'll come back and, and hit some of the, the stuff that you may or may not be confused about here. So what we do is we say this is equal to this times this. When we do this multiplication, we'll get 41.48. When we do this multiplication, we'll get 28.27. So let me stop here before I write down the answer. Uh, this is uh, the first isotope contribution. Okay, and this guy is the second isotope contribution. All right, so let me go ahead and add it together. We'll come back and we'll just talk about the final answer. So we do 41.48 plus 28 plus uh, 0.27, we'll get 69.75. What unit are we working in? Working in units of U, atomic mass unit. When you see a U there, it's atomic mass unit. So I'll put a little arrow there. This means AMU. So we'll circle this. This number, if you look up gallium, which is GA on the periodic table, uh, depending on your book and how many decimal spots you have, it should be pretty darn close to 69.75 is the atomic mass of gallium, which should be listed directly under, under this. So I do encourage you, open your textbook that you have for your class and look under gallium, look at the atomic mass of gallium, and it should be close to this. This is how all of those numbers on the periodic table are really calculated. They go in nature, they figure out how many isotopes exist, they measure the atomic mass in AMU of all of those isotopes, and then they measure how abundant they all are, and then they do a calculation just like this. In this case, we're saying there's only two isotopes. But if you had 10 isotopes, you would just keep adding on terms with the mass of the isotope times the percent uh, that you have there. 